a review of surgical ligation of a patent ductus arteriosus in a neonate. PDA most commonly connects the proximal pulmonary artery to the descending thoracic aorta, just distal to the left subclavian artery, as seen here in the illustration of the right oblique view and below in an exaggerated version of the view seen during the thoracotomy. Normal physiology during birth leads to increased oxygen tension and decreased prostaglandin from the placenta and increased prostaglandin metabolism by the lungs, which ultimately leads to ductal smooth muscle contraction. In premature neonates, this mechanism is often underdeveloped, which leads to patency of the ductus arteriosus. The incidence of this increases with the increasing degree of prematurity. This leads to a left-to-right shunt, causing pulmonary overcirculation and left ventricular volume overload, and can lead to CHF. When assessing for hemodynamically significant PDAs, there are some clinical and echocardiogram findings to keep in mind that can guide decision-making, such as a large diameter PDA, an enlarged left atrium, and retrograde descending aorta flow. This translates to clinical features including inotropic and vasopressor support, ventilator support, feeding intolerance, and acute kidney injury. Initial treatment consists of non-pharmacologic measures including fluid restriction, diuresis, and enteral feedings. When PDAs persist or in the cases of large significant PDAs, pharmacological measures are usually added. These typically are in the form of indomethacin, acetaminophen, and or ibuprofen. Those that are refractory to pharmacologic management are referred for mechanical closure. This is primarily via transcatheter device closure, but for those not amenable to these approaches, surgical ligation is utilized. Surgical ligation is preferably done in the NICU to obviate any risk of transferring to the OR. Preparation for the case includes collaboration with anesthesia to ensure safe operation is performed. Prior to prepping and draping the patient, a chest x-ray confirms the endotracheal tube position. Two IVs are placed and one is readily available for administration of any urgent medications or blood products. A half to a full unit of blood is available and in the blood warmer primed with normal saline. Dopamine and epinephrine infusions are placed on med fusion pumps and ready to administer prior to beginning the case. Medications including atropine, vecuronium, half-strength bicarbonate, epinephrine, calcium gluconate, lidocaine, ANSEF, and fentanyl are at the bedside. Blood pressure cuffs and pulse oximetry probes are on the upper and lower extremity. In addition, we have a PDA travel tray that includes all surgical equipment needed for PDA ligation. After this is confirmed, the patient is then placed in the right lateral decubitus position for a posterior lateral left thoracotomy. The incision is placed directly underneath the scapula, approximately one and a half centimeters in size. A muscle sparing thoracotomy is performed through the third intercostal space. An amalleable retractor is used to mobilize the left lung anteriorly. With this, the anesthesiologist usually does not have any difficulty with ventilation. The pericardium is identified and dissected with electrocartery. The vagus nerve is seen here just above the dissection and careful blunt dissection is continued. During this dissection, it is common to encounter small horizontal veins which can be tied off. As you dissect the distal arch in the PDA, it is crucial to identify the descending thoracic aorta and the left subclavian artery to avoid inadvertent ligation of these structures. Below the vagus nerve, careful blunt dissection is used to circumferentially isolate the PDA. It's important to avoid manipulating the PDA directly as this can be friable tissue. Once the PDA is nearly circumferentially dissected, a test clamp is done and the lower extremity blood pressure is checked. Once there is no drop in blood pressure, an appropriately sized vascular clip is found, is placed around the PDA while ensuring the vagus nerve and left recurrent laryngeal nerve is not involved, and two MRI-compatible vascular clips were applied to the PDA. The patient remained hemodynamically stable. The left lung was allowed to retract to its normal position. A chest tube is then placed in a separate incision at the anterior axillary line just below the nipple. A figure of eight Cecily stitch was then used to reapproximate the ribs. The muscle and fascia were reapproximated using vicral suture, and the skin was closed with PDS suture. 
One of the main concerns with postoperative management of these patients is post-ligation cardiac syndrome. It occurs in up to 50% of very premature neonates, and they will experience this typically 6 to 12 hours after PDA closure. It is characterized by hypotension requiring inotropic or vasopressor support and respiratory insufficiency. By closing off the low pressure pulmonary circuit, PDA closure leads to increased afterload in the left ventricle and simultaneously decreased LV preload. This is poorly tolerated by neonates and responsible for the hypotension that commonly ensues. Management is based on providing volume to increase the preload and inotropes to help the left ventricle overcome the new increase in afterload. Milonorone and dobutamine are first-line agents for this scenario.